Tape one, side B. He like Melba was the one that was falling in love with this Carson. But evidently, she being younger, had to go back home and go to school. So Kate came. We would call her Katie. And Katie came. And then she and Carson had this affair. And this young little boy coming along, being born. They were never married. And, of course, he was transferred and disappeared. And um, so uh, Katie evidently uh, had had, from what, Dad said in his records, had had another child before that, and it had, whether it was put out for adoption, I don't know. But when we were living on the farm, I don't know who was taking care of Carson at this time, but when we were living on the farm, and Dad had this huckster group, uh, I rem- we would, children would take turns going down with him, and he would always stop in. I learned later it was a Florence Griddington home for girls who were pregnant. And Dad would visit with her. Well, she had this child. And that was? That was Kate. Mm -hmm. And um, I suppose the child was adopted. No, no. The story story was she got a job where she could keep her baby in a household. And uh, heating in those days were little... Um, stoves that had a gas burner with the tile place that would heat up. And when she went by it one time, her skirts caught the flame and she was burned and the baby died with her. I don't know. She must have been carrying the baby. But that's the story there. And then Melba took over raising Carson. Um, Now, she didn't have him particularly, but she paid uh, for him to be raised, and he stayed on the eastern. He did come over. No, he no. lived. He lived well, on what? that one on Wood, Wood, Woodmore Avenue. There, I forget the name of the orphanage. But he oh, was, he was in an orphanage. Yeah. Well, then mother and dad had him for a while with you, with you kids. No, no, Carson. Kids. He lived. He lived with you for a while, didn't Carson? No. I, oh, I, I don't was old no. enough to know anything. The only one that lived with his his kids was Jack. Jack, Jack. Jack. I'm the only mm-hmm. one that lived with us in mm-hmm. here, and okay. and I was in the first grade. Mm-hmm. Well, evidently Carson went back on the Eastern Shore because yeah. I I um, met um, his sister-in-laws in my homemaker's work from. Tom County people. But Carson is dead now. Uh, he did marry, and he has a couple children. Well, now, so, wait a minute. I don't know whether he's dead or not. He is. Now, Melba told me. Because when Melba died, the only surviving person they could get in her family was a Carson Weed to Houston. That was a junior. Melba called me one time. After we were living up, I'd been writing to Melvin, keeping in touch with her. It was a junior then. I'm it must have been a junior because she called me. Well, they said it was a nephew. Now, that's uh-huh. all I know. That she had gotten word that Carson had died, and she said, I feel like a piece of me has gone with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Melva did marry. Uh, she, she was a secretary for... Uh, Gas and Electric or a power company in 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 Easton, and they transferred her down to Richmond, and she met this Edgar Harlow, who had three children who were in an orphanage, Methodist orphanage, and after the orphanage learned that Edgar had married, they bring the oldest son. There were two uh, two sisters, uh, which was Edgar Jr and dropped him on their doorstep. And uh, Dad arranged, or Melvin arranged, that maybe Edgar Jr. could come up to the farm and live with us. So we made a trip down there uh, one Easter to uh, bring him back with us. And Edgar, being an alcoholic, was on a drunk that weekend and wouldn't let Sonny, so-called, come home with us. But the following year, he did come, and we he lived with us on the farm. He was Lloyd's age. He lived with us for six years, 
and he went into the Navy the same time Lloyd went into the Navy. You went in together. Yeah, yeah. They were buddies. And as soon as school was out, Lloyd was up at the farm. And he stayed with us all summer. And he did this uh, until he went into the Navy. The farm in the year. But the now, wait a minute. I don't know. On my farm. Yeah. Now, when I was living with, in the summertime there yeah, with, with Melba. You don't have to Melba tell about there. your experiences and, down and there. She worked the then for Eastern Star Democrat. Oh, a newspaper. Newspaper. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I think that's, and I don't know who she worked for you over when she lived It was work. a power, it was an electric but power Bruno, company. Bruno lived with Melba for a summer, and she comes back home with a Virginia accent. Well, <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, and her, oh. her second marriage, for, uh, Melba's second marriage was to Ox, uh, Oscar, Oscar Hutton. Harlow. Hutton. 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 He, she met him when she was secretary at Walter Reed. And she was a federal worker for years. So I used to visit her when she worked as a secretary, I think, Department of Commerce. And uh, even when I was working in Washington, she stopped by and dropped stuff off for me to take home. Uh, but she, she, her working in uh, Walter Reed, she wrote up wills for uh, patients, so soldiers that didn't have any wills. And that was what she was doing, and that's how she met uh, this Oscar. Uh, Oscar. And Oscar died. He had, he, uh, um, he not a uh, medal honor winner, but he had, he had a lot of service time. And they buried him in, in, oh, in Arlington. And when Melba died, that's the last thing in this paper. I read, where was it? Where did I read this? I, don't, I didn't read it. <laughs> I don't know where it was, but it had the history uh, of Melba. And it was reported, I guess. In the I book. hope you have it, because I'd like to put it Maybe in I our but records. She's buried with Oscar in, in Arlington. Oh, my gosh. Well, another... And the mother, mother is always wanted somebody buried in Arlington. Really? And so I, I, I called, I called a, a funeral director that was in Quantas with me, and they asked him, I said, hey, I said, they used, they didn't cut out, you had to be a Medal of Honor winner in order, or a senator or something like that to be buried in, in, in Arlington. I said, but I understand they were lifted, lifted that regulation. She says, yeah. I said, well, find out whether I can be the buried in or not. <laughs> He said, "Will you give me your history, and I'll find out." And he called me back the next day. He said, "You're eligible." <laughs> and, and I said, "Well, that's a little far away to go, but but there's a now there's a two week wait to get married. You they, they keep you busy. You got to get your timing down right." <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are we now? Well, I was just thinking and talking about the will, and she insisted that. Mother and Dad have a will, so she well, was, that, well that was smart. Yeah. Well, I must say, um, Melba was a very good-hearted person. She befriended everybody, and um, you could tell her about her having nothing herself. Tell yeah, her about yes, no, I won't. <laughs> no, she was. I'll just say this: she wasn't the housekeeper. She wasn't the housekeeper, and she loved cats. She ended up... And she never threw away a newspaper. She never threw away a Well, okay, she's related to Dad because... A, a niece. Dad's only niece. Okay. The only cousin that we have on the Faulkner side that we know. And Mother always said she definitely was related to Dad because Dad could never throw anything away. And Dick will tell you that I'm related and mother always told me that dad's mother was like that. She would never throw anything away. Well, um, Melba had a nice house out near University of Maryland, and she traded it with a friend who had been living with her. And the house that she traded was down in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. So that's where 
she oh, lived. Oh, that's how oh, she got down oh, there. When I first went to Washington, I had a job at the Section Theater. She lived on 13th Street. We're on the way out to the College Park. On the way out to the College Park. Now you're stuck in there. Well, um, the, where, but, where, where she sold that. Now, where did she run from? She was at work at, well, maybe she had Oscar's place for all I know. Well, but it wasn't, it wasn't no, uh, 13th Street address. She eventually ended up in a, um, a retirement home, and then she had diabetes and had an infected foot, which never seemed to heal. And when she got to the place, she couldn't handle herself, and she was full of arthritis. Her feet were all crippled, and her, she had to give up work because of her crooked fingers. And she and they put her in a nursing home. She was in there about two years, and I visited her, and... Um, then when she would write to me, she couldn't write. She would have somebody, she'd dictate the letters. And uh, then I never heard if she was still living or not. Edgar was the one that told me that she she died, well, what, about how long ago? Two years ago? A little past, yeah, I think a little bit. Yeah, past. yeah. Okay, can you help me? You're, you're saying that Melba was the only... Niece, the only niece of niece of dad. What about uh, our only cousin on the Faulkner side, directly first cousin? Well, who was uh, Harmon? Harmon's. Oh, All that. right, let me go so down through, through that lineage. Oh, that far away. Yeah. Um, that was dad's um, side. All right. Yeah, you too. Here, yeah, I have it on this list: the maternal side on the Faulkner side. James Robert Bartlett marries this Belchelor, and um, Kate Ellen is a, da- uh, is a daughter who married James Edward Faulkner, dad's father. There were twins that followed Kate Ellen, Josephine and Ida. You know Aunt Ida. You know Aunt Ida. Well, we don't. We Not don't really. Know. Well, Aunt you Ida know, Weber you know, lived in Baltimore. Eva. Yeah, Eva. Yeah. Eva. Eva. All right. All right. The same cousin as what Yeah. Um, I, I have Eva's name down. Yes, you do. Somewhere. Okay. Well, I don't know. I might come across it right now. I have the lineage of the twins, Aunt Josie, who married Asa Coker. And um, Eleanor married Roland Davis. They lived in Westport. Uh, no, 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 that was Dixon lived in Westport. Davis was the one, let's see, um, she the contractor? they didn't call her Eleanor, though, because when he was a judge of the Orphan's Court and lived down there in, at Glen Burnie, and their daughter was Regina, and she was my age, but, um, and I can't, we didn't call her Eleanor. She, as a widow, took a job up in Frederick at the Frederick mm-hmm. Hospital as a matron to yeah, the yeah, girls who were in training. Then there was Jessie, who never married. There was Eva, who married John Harmon. And they had Harvey, Jean, and Guy. Now, in Dad's records, there was an, a, a child before Harvey. And she wasn't exactly right either. And she died. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, Mother always says that Guy, what's his name? Oh, Guy. No, no, Guy, no, 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 Harvey. Harvey. Harvey was retarded yes. because, because Eva dropped him as a baby. Yeah, oh, I remember Mother said that. that. Mm-hmm. Well, Harvey's the same age as you, wasn't he? Yeah. And mm-hmm. you're telling me there was another baby? According to what Dad wrote in his notes so earlier, previous dad, to Harvey. They had, they had a bad child, or maybe a couple of them. Oh, yeah, they did. And they, they, they had, they had a child, and they were really born as new babies and didn't live there enough. Yeah. So they dropped it as it came out, they were new babies. And they yeah. didn't bother to keep them. They, they but they kept Harvey, I guess he... Well, Harvey happened later, being dropped. Oh, 
And then there was George, and then there was Minnie, who lived down there at Westport, married Robert Dixon. He worked, he was a farmer. And then there was a Walter, that says, who died at sea through World War I. And then Aunt Josie had Ralph, Asa Jr., Harold, Robert, Mary, and Stephen. So I do have those. And those are cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, then, uh, well, getting on to the history of mother and dad, the reason they left Washington, I guess I was down in Tacoma Park. We lived there um, for five years, I guess. Um, I remember going to kindergarten, and I was five years old. I went to kindergarten. And um, Albert Edgar was only two years so old. Had to make a date on that. Yeah, 1918. Okay. Uh, no, it would have been 1917. Well, you were five and thirteen and five and eighteen. Well, no, but sixteen, five, twenty-one. That's right. Edgar was born in Colonial Beach in 1916. We were in Washington when Albert was born, and I remember that spring because I evidently went to kindergarten. The year. Uh, Albert was born in 18, and I was five years old, so that means mother had four children in five years. And I thought no, I, six years, I because I was, four, so I was 13, and Albert was born in 18. So, in, But I was going to kindergarten, and I remember that spring, I was so sick, I missed a lot. And mother had it hard, and I know that grandmother Shaw was there. And uh, helped mother. Edgar had pneumonia as a two-year-old. Mother coming home with a new baby. Mm. And I was sick in bed. I think I had the measles or something. But I can remember being in bed. And uh, I missed a lot of kindergarten. And then the story goes, my little friend that I played with, Annie, up at the top of the hill, Annie Wallace, what, we were the same age. We were in kindergarten together, and fall came around. I hadn't gone into kindergarten until January, because that's when I became old enough to start. But Annie was going on to first grade to, um, oh, what was the name of that school? It's still there. Tacoma Park. No, it wasn't Tacoma Park. We went to Montgomery Blair School. Yeah. And it was across the street from the Episcopal Church where I went to kindergarten. So Annie was going into first grade. Well, I go along first grade with Annie. And I'm sent back to kindergarten. I keep going to the first grade. And they keep sending me back. Finally, the first grade teacher said, well, if she can carry the work, we'll let her stay. So I got in a little earlier. And then when we came up to the farm, and I was ready for the fifth grade. Dad said since I'd had city school education, which was further advanced than the country, he made me skip fifth grade. He made Muriel skip fourth grade. So that put us all yeah, a year. I skipped. Well, I guess they put me in the third grade. Anyway, going all through high school, I was always the youngest one in the class, and I was never mature enough to. Um, so what I accomplished in school. I worked hard to make the honor roll, but I did a lot of memorizing. <laughs> but anyway, I graduated when I was 16, and most of my uh, contemporaries were 17. Did you help him to that whole street, Tacoma Park? Right. All right. Tacoma Park. Edgar was younger, of course, but this is the way I remembered it. Dad, somehow or other, with his taxi business, and he had been a policeman, too, for a while, but he was having trouble finding work. And he got a job working for the Chautauqua. The Chautauqua was a from Chautauqua, New York. They sent out entertainment people around mainly to colleges and towns to put on a whole week of educational programs. Radcliffe Chautauqua is what was written on the suitcase. 
And um, I learned after I was married and have been reading history for Carroll County that Union Bridge always had a Chautauqua program. And Danton's parents always saw that they bought tickets and it, it cost so much to go. And they went to the weekly programs that Chautauqua offered. And I can remember that morning watching Dad say goodbye to Mother. And he had a trunk. And Mother said to him, you've packed your winter underwear. He said, well, I, he said, I have to go different places. I don't remember what his answer was, but I remember that, and she was crying. And he kissed her and left. Well, the next thing, we weren't conscious of what all was going on, but Dad left Mother for another woman. So here Mother was, four children. So we moved to Baltimore. Mother rents a house a block above where Grandma Shaw and Aunt Lil lived on Covington Street. We were opposite... Is the park, Edgar? Riverside, Riverside Park. Park, which is where the roundhouse was. And the elementary school was on the other side of the park. And I can remember going over there to school. And uh, how in those days, when people in the evening would, uh, after their supper evening was all... We would change our clothes, be, have our bath, and get into clean clothes. And everybody sat on the front marble steps. The famous <laughs> Baltimore white white well, steps. Didn't have it was a lot cool. It was so old wow. houses with marble steps. My grandmother and grandfather lived in those. I mean, they're so famous. And always under the double window beside the stone steps was a park bench. And neighbors would walk up and down the street, stopping and passing the time of day. We kids would all get together and play games. I can remember playing uh, in and out the windows, you know, and and singing all these little games and ring around to Rosie and tag, you know. It was a lot of fun. Um, but one of the one occasion it hits my memory, and that was they they found your dad, and all the talk that was going on. Aunt Lil was so provoked with Dad because he had done such nasty things. The whole Shaw family were mad with him, I guess, for changing the name and making. And that baking Alice go through all these humiliating circumstances. And it turns out that Aunt Lil put a search at the well, well, All right, you, you lost it a little. All right. Here go with that. We were on Covenant Street that first. And I, and I guess I was in the first grade. And anyway, I don't know for how long we went there. Not very long, I don't think. And mother, through the Episcopal Church. Oh, that's right. We well, had to be I, baptized. Go ahead. And she put us in a home. What are you? In Washington. And uh, a children's home. A Why did she do that? So she, and she kept Albert with her and lived with Grandma Shaw. She gave up the house she was renting. So you went to So we were only there for an interim until yeah. we could enter into the home. And uh, then she she lived with Grandmother Shaw and had Albert, kept Albert, and got a job at Hutzler's as a sales clerk. <laughs> and this went on for a year. I, we were only in the home about a year. But I know... The boys were in one part and the girls in another. And we would meet together in the evenings after our meal and have vespers. 
this was a beautiful thing to remember because the director could play the piano and she could just play anything. And the boys would stand on one side of the room. I don't know if they could remember this or not. The girls would yeah. stand on the other and we would sing. And we learned all these beautiful songs. And this pianist, Mrs. Van Sant, would play the piano. What and they were Van Sant. No, that was Van Sant was your matron on the boys, and she loved Edgar. Here he was with oh, these beautiful girls, girls. <laughs> and he was the youngest one they had in the home at that time. And uh, it was it was a nice experience. And we walked to the elementary school as a group. And we would go to movies. You know, we were given, really, a lot of privileges. Christmas came. We had uh, nice toys. And uh, Did your I, mother visit you there? Mother would come occasionally and visit us. And then the father... Your mother came, too. Oh, she yeah, did? A couple times. Well, I remember this August. She didn't have grandmother with us. And she told us. She said, your grandmother died in my arms. She died of a heart attack through the night. Yes. Grandmother Shaw. Yeah, but Aunt Gert tells me a different story. <laughs> she said that wasn't true. She said your mother was out on a date with your dad. After they found dad, he had to go. He went not to the house of correction. He went to a middle house where he was able to go and work. Did they but had to come back. What were the circumstances? Now, wait a minute. Why? Now, when they found that, they, 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 they found that, Aunt Lil found him, it's true. And so, Mother asked for support, which we would get. And get it. So, Aunt Lil and Aunt Gert went and had him locked up. He went to jail. He went to jail. And, and finally, in jail, then. They got together and said, okay, they would go on a farm. No, but he was in this place where well, he I don't know about a year to raise money so he could give to Mother. And then, oh, with this Chautauqua business, he had traveled over the oh, countryside, yeah. and he found, he met an Ed Case, who was a realtor agent and in Westminster. Oh, what about the woman in there? Who, yeah, we who never heard she? any more uh, about her. I think I'll tell you, that, now this is what Ed, Gert has told me that we got we got a half brother. You know, well, yeah, right? there was a child. I know, and that's that, why but, he left. But and he died at childbirth. So oh. but, but this woman, I don't know about it. Wasn't I heard that she was a um in, in this business? Well, yes, yeah. because. She did the tour business. Right. Dad would take tours up to right. Gettysburg on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And she would always ride up front with him. Mm -hmm. He had this Rio, which was a seven-passenger car. And occasionally, he would take one of us children with him. One time, I went with him. One time, Muriel went with him. I don't know if no, Edgar ever did. But I can remember, after they left, after the tour people for the day left, Dad would always take her back to her apartment. And I can remember sitting there in the hall while they said goodbye to each other. <laughs> My father was good. Sure. Well, you can't. I can't. I mean, would, would go in this room with this woman and leave his child outside the door. <laughs> I want to know. Well, I was for him. I've seen, I've seen men go down, go down to the check rallies, we call it, in Amber. And they go into a house of ill repute while the wife waited outside. I want to know, once they found, Lil found him, they found him, had him jailed, then he went through a rehab period yeah, or halfway, yeah. house, <laughs> halfway and then he, house, and then he started dating Alice again? No, no, no. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't know about that. They, they, they got back together again. How that? did Alice get back together with him? Well, they did. She, she did it. <laughs> But and that's she, what she went on the She had to go back with him. I mean, she had all the kids. Well, well the baker. I guess he enticed her in this way because he had a, made friends with this realtor, Ed Case, in Westminster, and saw this farm for sale. 
a 35-acre farm, and I think they paid $3,500 for it. And Dad brought Mother up to the farm then. Oh, and you don't know where it was taken. Then um, there was um, an, an, an opening for a teacher in the local school, at Vail School, which was over the hill from the farm. And he applied for it. He didn't have a teaching certificate. But in those days, all you needed was a high school education to teach. So he taught until they found a teacher to replace him. So that was why he'd walk over the hill. And they even took Albert, who was only five years old. He'd take Albert with him. And Albert sat at a desk and learned to write, just like the rest of, of the little kids. And Dad taught for the first semester. And then we had another teacher came in. And, of course, I was in the sixth grade then because I skipped the fifth. Well, you know, so corporal, corporal punishment was in effect in those days. There was, there was two boys in there. And one guy was Albert Ecker and, and, and me. No, we, Clifton Ecker. Clifton Ecker, okay. And, and we would be the example for this disciplinary problem. Every day, if we would alternate, and we would get it one day, and I would get it the next. Demonstrating these kids to keep them straight. <laughs> so, well, Dad had a lot of these boys that were coming in, came in after the farm work was done in the fall. And some of them were 16 years old, you know, big boys, because in the winter, that was something to do, was right. come back to school. So you you have, I mean, 16, you could stay out of school. So you all got out of the orphanage when the farm was fought, and the, yep. the two pairs got that's back together. That's the farm got out of and it. got you, yeah. and yeah. you joined the yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we family grew. But you know, yeah. we were little, and we didn't hear all the conversation and things that were going on. You know, these were just happenings. And then when Dad lost his um, teaching job, there was no income coming in. So um, he started a huckster route, and he would go around over the countryside gathering up butter and eggs and chickens and vegetables and fruits and take them down to Baltimore. And he established a huckster route down in Baltimore. Then on his return back up, he'd go into market, and he would bring back grapefruit and oranges, and he'd go to the fish market and bring back fish. So then he had a huckster route at both ends. And then when this um, strike was on the Western Maryland in 1925, he decided, well, that would be a good income. He'd go back on the railroad. So he went back as a scab. And uh, they moved back to Baltimore. Well, at that time, this is where my life changed, because... He wanted, I was, I had graduated from the seventh grade and I was ready to go into high school. We were five miles out of town. And in those early days, you would find a home to live in through the week to come home. You'd find a family to live with. And mother, dad made an arrangements for a family of school teachers. They were two maiden sisters and a bachelor brother living in this home. They were members of the Church of Brethren. In fact, we started going to the Church of the Brethren, Sam's Creek, which was right by the schoolhouse. And um, we that was our church relationship. So um, he, he his theory was, if I moved down to Baltimore with the family, I would have to go through the eighth grade before I could go into high school. And that wasn't required up in the country. So I just stayed in, with the family the four years, going home in the summertime, going home to back to Baltimore. And then since he worked on the railroad, uh, he got a pass for me to come home once a month. So I would go home for a weekend and come back. And then for my junior year, I, he, they put me with, uh, Uncle Albert's, with Mother's brother, Albert's wife, aunt from Philadelphia, who had a boarding house, a rooming house, in Ocean City, New Jersey. So I went up there and worked 
through the summer for five dollars a week, and I worked. I scrubbed did all the cleaning of this great big grooming house. Just like Mark and I, we went those and put it. Yeah, yeah. Then for my senior year, I had some friends who went up to Ocean Grove, New Jersey, where I could get more money. So I went up there in the summertime. So I really didn't have too much contact with my family as I was growing up. So I think the reason I had this um, experience has made me the person I am today. It, it has changed my attitude toward life and reverence for life a lot different than the rest of my family. Okay, now I'm wondering where all these different jobs that Dad was the one came in between. Well, now jobs. that was it. Being a scab worker, and after the strike was broken, he did stay with the Western Maryland for quite a while. No, he only stayed there until 1928. Oh, all right. And, and anyway, he was... He, this was, was 25 he, when he moved down. He was smoking forever where he was. And, and the strike grievances hadn't been settled. And he was still working at and he went to the press and complained about the same thing strike workers were. The next thing you know, he didn't have a job. And it was awful that summer. We what were, summer? 28. 28. Number. That's the very beginning of the It was 25. Depression. Depression. That, I'm that was the very beginning of the first. You were born when? 29? I was born 28. Charles, Charles comes in. Charles, Charles was 28. We, 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 oh, 25. 26. Mother, mother was, was pregnant. 26. Yeah. When we were over in Lansdale. Mother was pregnant with him when they left the yeah, farm. Yeah, when we left the farm, she was pregnant with Charles. And he, we lived in Brooklyn for about three or four months, and then he found this house over in Dorchester Heights, Lansdale, post office. And that's where Charles was born, and the rest of you all. Yeah. Um, and, I was born in South Baltimore. Dad was still on the railroad. At that he was time. still on the railroad when I was born. No, no, he got out in twenty eight. Twenty eight. That's 20, when Mark was born. Yeah, I was in the sixth grade when Mark was born. Twenty nine. Anyway, uh, he went into a garage business. Up no, on I Day remember Street. that. I think uh, Muriel and I went right. up there and scrubbed that office, and it was black as the ace of It didn't take long for him to. He went bankrupt. A, a, a what business? It, it, garage. A car. He was a mechanic. A car. Yeah, he had a car garage. It was a big garage. It's still there. In fact, no, no. and he didn't go buy it. I look at it. I can remember that thing. Mm. It's right across. No. Uh, what is it? Burn, burn, burn Harmon. Uh, so he didn't do it. Brewery. Brewery. Yeah. Right how, across the street from it. How, That's North, North, North Avenue. You know, you know, North Avenue. It's only a couple blocks from North Avenue. What right? happened to that business? It was Gay Street. Gay street. It was on Gay Street. Gay Street, yeah. I mean, I uh, uh, he wouldn't go back there. Uh, ethically, he wouldn't go back there. And he met. Bills for years, dude. And, and couldn't pay. Could it was only five hundred dollars. And, and if it wasn't for Melba Covey, oh, Melba came to the rescue of the family. Our house was up for auction. Yeah. I don't know how many times and Melba yeah. would come in and bail them out. Mm. You know, we, it, and then another thing, Melba said later on, Dad never made any effort to pay her back. <laughs> And then, well, then he went into selling books. Yeah. The world, what is it, World Book? Life, the book life. of Life. Book of Life. Mark, book you remember life. that? Dad sold books? I remember that. Book of Life, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember, remember that. that. Dayton's did, mother did, got... Did, and I got a... I, my summer work, I worked through the farm right next door to Ditzel. Mm -hmm. And I worked there, and I started when I was about 10 years old working in there. Mother said you got something like 10 cents a day. I got 10 cents an hour. Hour. Oh. Worked 10 oh. hours a day. I had an hour off for lunch because that's how long it took the mules to eat. <laughs> and anyway, and she and said, that's $6 a week, six days a week, a dollar a day. 
And I take six dollars home to her Saturday afternoon. And she wait ten o'clock at night and she go shopping yeah, in the market there. in Baltimore. Yeah. With that six dollars and buy groceries and, and, and meat for the whole week. Yeah. On six dollars. Go to work, come right. home and bring that money and give it to her. Yeah. Well, at first I did, of course, that had the job, but then later on she used it all. I banked it for a while and used some of that to go to school on. Oh. And Muriel had, Muriel had, well, Muriel, when she graduated from high school, she wanted to go to normal school. Mm -hmm. And she, but well, wouldn't let her go because it didn't, didn't have the money in the first place. She just could, could have got a scholarship. Muriel was bright. She had, well, she but had she did place. get a, a scholarship, but it wasn't to well, Thompson. No, she got it. She, the scholarship she used was when she went to secretarial school. school. She went to secondary mm -hmm. school. Because and then she got a job with a lawyer that her paid her three dollars and a half a week. And that didn't even buy enough for buy her hose. Because you no days you wore silk hose. Muriel told <laughs> me the reason why she went to the um secretarial know. college instead of the normal state school. normal is because of the time. Two years to the normal school, and Dad couldn't afford for her to go to normal school and not work and give them the money. money. They needed her money, so they went to the secretary of school because it was only a year, and then she got her job with the lawyer's office and gave her money to them. Mm -hmm. And it was not what she wanted to do, but mm -hmm. she was told that was what she had to do. That sounds like my answer. Mm -hmm. Well, then... All right, now let's get back. He's he's selling the book of life, and I know he came all back up into the New Windsor area, selling all to all his friends. Even Dayton's mother bought a set of books, and she had just been withered and moved into town, and money was scarce. I think they were one hundred twenty-five dollars. I don't know what they were. I I have the set. It's up in the attic, and it never gets opened. Oh my goodness. Piece of history. <laughs> All right. Then how yeah, we, we spent the summers down on the shore with the sister and Agnes. And Uncle Jim. And, and some of the summers, later on, I used to go to Tillman's Island. I lived with Uncle Charlie and, and stayed there. And I met his, his grandchildren that lived a couple of houses down. I used to go fishing with them. That was on Fairbanks. Like Fairbanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when Aunt's sister died, we spent the summer down. Well, in Uncle Jim. State. Uncle Jim had died though no, no, before. No, 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 Uncle Jim. Had, oh. Uncle Jim remarried. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, now Carson was there. Uh, uh, we lived in the summer there at, at, at the Scrollsboro State. Uh, and I remember when we went back home, uh, we didn't go across the ferry because it cost too much. You'd drive around. Drove around. That, you know, that, that was a four hour, four, more than a four hour run. And I remember one time going back, we had, we had six blowouts on the way home. <laughs> he couldn't afford to buy new tires. Uh, and, and, of course, the place had to be taken care of for, uh, during the summer. The grass was this high in the backyard and had to use a sickle to clean it up. This place now yeah, was. This was a, this I, was a, it, it lands down there. Oh, it means? No, in the Goldsboro State. Now no, you're talking. The Goldsboro State is where we lived back. I said we left there in the summer. We had six flats on the way home. Oh, and well, we had then, two cars, too. Well, now where was it the grass was so high? In backyard. Oh, back home. All right. Yeah, oh, well, backyard. You bought a farm for thirty-five hundred dollars. You lived there or moved there. No, he only paid. He only paid twenty-two hundred. Where did you jump twice? No. And somehow you got down. Nineteen twenty-five. They bought the house in Baltimore. Well, how did you get off that farm? Where you were teaching school? Yeah. He lost his job and he moved down there. He was only filling in until they could get a teacher there. So moved off that farm. Right. In 25. The fall of 25. Right. Well, no, they didn't. They were up over in Brooklyn for a little bit until they found this house. That's what Lloyd was telling me. 
Mm -hmm. So he moved, they moved into Smith Avenue then in 1925. Yeah, 26. Yeah. Miles had been born then. Ma, I write that down because I asked Lloyd, he said he didn't know if it was 25 or 26. 26. That's why we're well, it's there. there. It's recorded. Because Charles was born there, and Charles 10 years younger than I am. Well, I have to have a piece of paper. When he was in the drug business here, does that. Uh, that was the Sinclair company that no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, because, that, uh, no. We haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. No, we have not now. But after the, he wasn't making too good with the books. Then he, he got did. a gasoline station Myron, on Myron. Washington Boulevard, right diagonally across from the Dumbly Woods at the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. And it was a full pump station where he had to. Yes, up yeah. pump it up. Now, mother run that as much as he did. Anyway, things got to where they, he organized it again. And he was the original charter member of the Maryland Gasoline Independent Gasoline Dealers Association. And he was secretary treasurer of it. I don't know why they ever trusted with money. But a <laughs> uh, little shack in there, the shack that. that we ran a gasoline station. It was only about, I can say about maybe six by ten, something like that. Right. No bathroom, no toilets. You had to go back to the sideboard. And, and finally, the big, there was a restaurant next door, and we finally uh, talked the guy into letting us use that head. Uh, we were there until 1930.